Hey there. Classic. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Hey friends, in this video I'm going to teach you all about how to illustrate a floral crescent moon like this guy. Um, these are super popular and really fun to illustrate. I'm going to teach you a really basic way of going about adding florals and leaves and delphinium to a floral crescent moon wreath type of thing. Um, so you feel confident. It looks really detailed and really hard, but it's actually not. So watch till the end of the video and I'll give you some awesome tips and you'll be illustrating this bad boy in no time. And let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So I am planning on scanning and digitizing this illustration. I'm not planning on hanging it up in a frame or anything that I would need a thicker like cardstock for, um, cover stock paper for. So I am using layout bond paper. This is my favorite illustration paper. It's really smooth. It's also semi-transparent. So if I had a sketch underneath that I didn't want to mess up because I finally got it perfect, then I could tear off that sheet with the sketch on it, put it underneath a new sheet of paper and trace on top of it. Um, today I'm not gonna do any sketching, or I am gonna do some sketching, but I'm not gonna do any tracing. But if you feel a lot more comfortable getting a sketch right or tracing or whatever it might be over a circle guide, then go for it. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, but I love this paper. It scans really well. Uh, like I said, it's really smooth and it's semi-transparent if you want to trace. So I'm going to flip it open to the top sheet of paper um, and grab my Sumo Grip by Sakura pencil. I love this pencil. I just started using it a couple weeks ago. It's a lead or mechanical pencil, 0.7 size lead. I love it. It's great. Um, don't have to sharpen it. You do have to keep lead on hand, um, so make sure... You have lead if you do use mechanical pencils. I'm gonna be using this eraser on the Sumo Grip pencil as well, but those mono white erasers from Tombow are really great as erasers as well. Um, and then for actual ink, I am probably either going to use my size 03, there it is, micro, micron pen, or 01 if I can find it. We're digging around. I have a lot of micron pens. Um, but 0, 3, 0, 5, and 0, um, 1 are my favorite tip sizes for micron pens. There's my 0, 1. Um, 0, 1 is smaller than 0, 3, so it's kind of got the nice fine detail look. If I'm scanning the illustration, I prefer to use a slightly thicker pen tip size because um, then you don't have to do all this adjusting in Illustrator and your scanner to make the lines a little bit thicker. So, and they get spotty if they're too thin. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just be doing, I'm doing a floral crescent moon. So I'm gonna have like one C curve area of a circle is going to be dense with florals towards the midder, midder <laughs> towards the middle and then taper off kind of like a crescent moon. Um, a C shape and then go to a thin line. So I don't have anything that I can just like uh, trace a circle around like a roll of um, painters tape would be nice but so I'm just gonna freehand it basically be super super light to start and just do these circles over and over again until you get a nice circle shape so I'm lightly bringing my pencil around in circular motions the more you do this the more you're gonna bring out a somewhat perfect circle shape um, with all the different circle lines so you can follow and erase anything that you don't want like I don't need this line way out here but I'm going to keep this part of that circle down here um, just kind of get rid of that but once I have the ink down I am going to wait for it to dry really well and then I'm going to erase all of the pencil this is going to be my guide um, for my moon shape and then I'm going to erase it after um, if it's really distracting for you, then you can erase more of this pencil. Like if you can't really see what you're doing, um, then erase more of it. 
Okay, so I've got my circle. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. This is kind of like a floral wreath, but it's just gonna be, like I said, heavy on one side like a crescent moon. And then we're just gonna connect the two tapered ends of the floral moon shape with a kind of like a branch type thing, okay? So I am going to bust out, I'm gonna start with my size 01 micron pen and just kind of see how that does for me. If I want things to look a little bit thicker, then I'm gonna use the 03, totally up to your, your preference. Um, I like to keep this pretty basic, but basically um, make it really dense so it looks super detailed looks complicated but it's not actually that complicated if you have patience so I'm just gonna start on the left side is gonna be my actual moon shape and then on the right is gonna be my branch shape or my branch <laughs> finishing off the moon and I'm gonna start in the bottom middle with my first branch and lead into floral Okay, so to create these shapes, um, and these leaves, stems, and florals, they're really basic. Anytime I'm drawing basic or illustrating basic floral wreaths like this, I'm just going off of really simple shapes. So my branches are all C curves. So if I wanted to create a branch, I'm just going to start at the base and kind of come up like a C curve and go about two inches, maybe three, and come down. And usually this leaf is an S curve like that. So I'll do another leaf, S curve out, and maybe S curve in. Or you could even do just two C curves. So we have a C curve like this, and an S curve, curves like that. Which, both of these are really perfect for your stems, um, and then for leaves, S and C curve are great too. So we have a C curve and an S curve, and there we have an awesome simple leaf, and you can add a little base to it, or you can do two C curves like that. Got a little basic leaf. So again, we're just doing a C curve for the stem and coming down, that was an S curve. We can do all S curves if we want, or we can do C curves. Just make sure to vary the size and shapes of your leaves and stagger them around the branch. If you have a branch that looks uniform all the way around it's fine but just make sure you do that for all of your branches and all of your florals because otherwise if one's like that and looks a bit more organic and natural it's going to look weird next to this really uniform stem and then for these flowers all i'm doing is i'm, I'm extending from one of these stems like this for an offshoot stem and then at the top here just kind of giving it this upside down teardrop shape maybe a little bit of texture at the top and then building ovals or teardrops off of that, kind of like a, like a heart. Um, you can do just one and go behind that. Maybe this one just has two. Make this one smaller. And there you have some really basic florals to build a floral wreath. And like I said, just make sure you stay patient um, and keep adding density and adding more leaves and florals. I might go in and even add like little berries to add more detail. Something different to look at. Um, but I'm not getting too crazy with what the florals actually look like and making them look really detailed. They're very basic. 
um, and just kind of going with the flow and following my, my pencil sketch, getting thin at the ends. So this is gonna be my thickest part and it's gonna taper off and then go to a skinny branch. Okay, so now that I'm getting over into this middle section of my C curve, which is going from here to here basically, I am gonna want to th gradually thicken this portion and then thin again about here so that it gets thicker and then tapers off into the tip of the moon shape. So I'm doing that by just kind of pulling leaf areas and sprigs um, and little florals out to the sides and always making sure that I'm kind of taking a step back and making sure I'm liking the shape if I don't then I'm just going to you know pull the shape back over here by leading something over into here but having fun with it making sure I'm having fun with it and building off of each sprig, adding loads of detail. But the detail isn't that scary when these shapes are so basic, so you really just need patience.
So now that I've got like most of my shape built out for this crescent moon, I'm just going in and adding these more kind of like delphinium florals. They're curvy, kind of gives it a little bit more movement and style. Um, so I'm literally just drawing these curves, so like S curves and adding small circle shapes around that curve. And I'm not making these perfect. I'm just kind of laying them down really quickly and it just does the trick. So now that I'm getting up towards the top here, I'm starting to taper off at the top to get thin like I did at the bottom. Um, and then about right here is when I'm gonna just start drawing a tiny little th uh, twig to connect to the base here. And then we have our floral crescent moon. And I might come back in this area and fill it in a bit more, make it a little bit wider, add more of these delphinium type sprigs. And this is a really fun piece to add as like a monogram, um, a logo, icon, whatever you want. Put some initials here in the middle if you want to add some of your lettering.
Okay, so now that most of my crescent shape is filled in, I'm gonna go back over these spots and fill them in a little bit more um, and maybe make this midsection a bit thicker. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and connect this circle with a really thin twig all the way around it. And if you think about twigs in nature, they're not perfectly straight um, or smooth. Um, so I'm not worried about having it kind of like have this natural effect where it's kind of got ridges and bumps. And then I'm just gonna kind of go all the way to here. And maybe slowly taper off with leaves here and there. like that. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit because I don't want to put my arm on it and smear. And then I'll move back over to this left side, do some finishing touches, make it the shape I really want just by adding in more of these leaves, florals, and delphinium to fill it out, make this a little bit thicker, and fill in this area a bit so this feels thinner and more tapered. And then we're good to call it. But this is a super fun um, piece to just play with, keep playing with the actual shape and turn your brain off a little bit. It might help to put on some soothing music to just kind of get in the zone because it's a lot of repetitive shapes over and over again. Um, but make sure you continue to kind of take a step back and look at the overall shape of your crescent. Um, that's the main focus and you are good to go. Okay, so basically I'm just adding in a few last sprigs and leaves and making this baby look real luscious and full. 
and I've got my C crescent shape that's looking really good. I might add some touches here and there, but that's basically how you go about illustrating a floral crescent moon. And it's so fun to look at. It's, it looks detailed and um, it looks really complicated, but really, like I said, all it takes is patience and doing the same basic shapes over and over again. So make sure if you're not feeling super confident with um, the detail and the time that this piece takes, just do these simple sprigs over and over, little individual sprigs of leaves and florals um, and the delphinium over and over and over again until you get really comfortable with the shapes and develop that muscle memory that it takes. Um, and then start adding it together. Um, there's really no method to the madness. I'm not doing a sprig of leaves first and then adding a flower and then adding delphinium. I'm just kind of, I do usually start with a sprig of leaves and then from there it just kind of unravels um, and I continuously look at the shape and I look at how the balance is feeling or how the composition is feeling. If there's a lot of delphinium on the right side, then I need to make sure to spruce it up and make sure there's some delphinium on the left, make it not feel so dense on the right or dense on the left, etc. So it's all about keeping an eye on what you're doing and creating this sort of um, staggering effect or staggered effect. So it's not too even or too uniform. Um, it just is the right amount of wild. So I hope you have fun practicing this tutorial. If you don't have the supplies that I used in this video, make sure you check out the description link or this description with all the links below. Subscribe to this channel. You will be receiving or seeing so much more of this type of content coming very soon. Illustration, tor to mm. Illustration tutorials, etc. And smash that like button on this video because it's just encouraging and very nice. And leave a comment below um, if you have in mind a flower that's really complicated for you that you hate drawing or even if it's not a floral, if it's an eyeball or whatever the, the subject is, leave a comment below and I would love to tackle whatever you struggle with in a tutorial video so you feel more confident. And thanks again for watching.